Welcome. Watch miracles that are still happening today. To God alone be all the glory forever. Amen. Be grateful because it feels, feels like a dream. It all started in 2014. My mom just woke up out of the blues. I'm talking of my mom that gave birth to me, you know, taught me hymn songs, drove me to church. She just said, Jesus Christ no longer exists. And she's now turning to Islam and, you know, it's only Mohammed that is. She denied everything about Christianity. And her own, the thing that gripped her, whatever came over her was so strong that it culminated into her detaching relations with any Christian around her. She, had, she developed a very strong hatred, including we, her biological children. Because she tried to talk us into her newfound faith and we said, no, you know, you were the one that even, you know, raised us up as Christians. So we will stay as Christians. And then that hatred extended to us. My mom disowned me. She cut off from me, you know, like for the, this was 2014, for the past 10 years, I have not seen my mom eye to eye. We've not spoken, we've not, you know, and I, 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 you know, in the long run, it just kind of became a new norm to me. Like, okay, well, life goes on, you know, it is what it is. And then sometimes this year, I was introduced to the NSPPD fire altar. Thank God for my maternal auntie who introduced me. February 6th, I joined. And then I started hearing mind-blowing testimony such that it's like, pinch me, like, is it during our time? And so I became so dedicated. And I'm like, God, you know, I must get my own testimony from this altar. And so in the UK, I was in my house because I'm based in Lagos. I flew all the way from Lagos, by the way, to share this testimony. So, um, during the NSPPD UK prayer conference, I was connected in my house. And then, if you can remember, a lady shared the testimony of reconnecting with her mother in UK. So, I was in my house in Lagos. I'm like, okay, you know, there's been no fiscal form. But if God, the God Elroy that did it for this lady, I've all, I'm also disconnected. It's been 10 years. I also tap into this uh, testimony for myself. And I just said it jokingly, you know, and that was it. Not long ago, like three weeks ago, another somebody from Ghana shared about reconnecting with her mother. And I'm like, okay, this is getting, you know, God is passing a clear message, you know. And I've heard of people saying, you know, if the, Papa didn't mention their case, but just by them connecting through testimonies, they got the same miracle. And so I'm like, okay, so God, the third person that will testify of reconnecting with her mother will be me. And if that happens, I will come to NSVP, the altar, and testify. So this happened just last Saturday. I was in my house, and then I received the call. In, from the first hello, she called my name. I knew this was my mother, and she just burst into tears. She said, my daughter, where have you been? I said, mommy, where have you been? I said, oh, like you even called me your daughter. So I'm your daughter. She said, yes. What kind of question is that? Come to, because my mom is based in Abuja. She said, come and see your mother. And because, you know, through all these testimonies, right? After connecting to the testimonies, Papa will always say, write what you want. I will always write what I want. The three things you, your prayer request during communion, I will always mention this case that what God cannot do does not exist. Just like that, it happened. And the moment I received the call, the next thing I booked my flight. And, and so the thing is, I'm coming from my mother's house right now to church. <laughs> and the catch, the catch is that the woman who did not want to use her ear to her eye to see any Christian near her, who did not want to use her ear to see... My mom was the one that woke me 7 a.m. today. Baby girls, get ready and start going to church. She said, what church do you go to? I said, Streams of Joy. She, was, she even booked Uber. She said, start going to church. So it is evident. The hand of God is evident. What God cannot do? Good morning, everyone. What God cannot do does not exist. My name is Bola. I'm making this video from Lagos, Nigeria. And I would like to testify to the goodness of God on this altar. I joined this altar of fire in the year 2021. And ever since, I've not missed one day to the glory of God. In the month of May 2024, I was feeling somehow. So my daughter sent me for a test and um, I, the test was carried out. And one of the tests revealed that um, I have um, endometrial adenocarcinoma. And uh, it was so shocking to me, you know, when you, these are the things 
that I hear Pastor Jerry mention and pray for people. And I always say, Amen. I never believe, because the way I'm serious with my prayer, I never believe that this can ever happen to me. So when I heard it, I was shocked. But I thank God that what came out of my mouth was, was that uh, what my God cannot do does not exist. That this is not my portion. That I will not use my money to service negativity. Then I left, I went to, I was afraid a little. But I heard on. And uh, I came home that day, I started praying, I started praying then. The doctor called me in, like the third day, that the way they saw it, they had to do an operation immediately. Like after a week, they called me in that there's something that they still need to send some things. I need to go to the laboratory. They need to send some of the specimens taken from me to the laboratory to ensure that the the cancer has not spread. So uh, this is the results showing that that there's, there's cancer in the womb, endometrial, adenocarcinoma. So when they called me in, that they felt that some had spread to other parts of my body. I was that was the the the, 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 the one that I couldn't take anymore. I now when I I, I I was so angry in my spirit. After going through this pain of operation, now telling me that they are seeing that some things are spread. I prayed twice a day. I'll do my uh, NSPP 7 a.m. Then in the midnight, I will repeat it again. And in fact, sometimes in my office, I put in, Oh Lord, show me mercy. While praying, I will cry to God. I said, God, these are the things I hear on NSPP day. This cannot be my portion. If you are doing it and even people, my own cannot be different, not show me mercy. The waiting period to hear the news if the cancer has not spread was so long that it was not becoming somehow. Pastor Jerry mentioned my case. I hear the Lord say cancer of the uterus cancer of the uterus cancer of the uterus the Lord is reversing it the Lord is reversing it. In fact one of the nurses in the hospital where I did my test called me that morning. She said auntie did you, did you hear your your, your testimony that Pastor Jerry mentioned the exact case. I said, yes, I had that, I had it. And I told her that it is settled. The day they now came, the doctor called me in, the result came, and this is the result. They said, negative for malignancy, none. Negative for malignancy, no cancer anywhere. No cancer, in fact, they said it that, in fact, that I do not need chemotherapy, or um, the other one, chemotherapy and uh, whatever. That I don't even need it at all, that I'm so clean that everything is fine. I want to give thanks to God of this fire altar. God of Pastor Jerry, he did it for me. God of Pastor Jerry did it for me. He mentioned my case. I, we have billions of people in this whole world, but God, in his mercy, showed me mercy. He mentioned my case. He came to me. He saw my pain. He saw my faith, and he came through for me. To God be the glory. I give thanks to God. And I want to, I want to say thank you, Pastor Jerry. The oil, like they used to say, the refinery, the oil of refinery on your head will never run dry. My name is Hawele Hiwenge, and I'm giving this testimony from Lagos, Nigeria, to thank God for delivering me from the hands of ritualist kidnappers. On June 17, 2024, it was a public holiday. I had to rush down to the office in the evening to get some things done. Upon arriving at the Lekki Link Bridge, where cabs are only the only available transport if you're not driving. I waited for a cab as usual to take me to a short distance to my office. That's why waiting for 30 to 45 minutes, there seems to be a scarcity of cabs that day. Eventually, a big for nothing Camry cab arrived. And I got in unaware that I had entered a kidnapper's vehicle. I taken that route many times for the past two years, but that day was different. There were four men in the car, including the driver, so I was the fifth person. I was seated by the window. Along the way, one of the men had lighted. That was before my stop. So upon approaching my own stop, I told the driver I wanted to get down. But he pretended to slow down. But suddenly he sped up. And he shouted, you will die today. <laughs> I laughed. 
The man sitting in the front passenger seat all of a sudden jumped into the back and I screamed, Jesus! The man to my left grabbed my throat while the one on my right hand began punching me in the face, trying to silence me. Despite their effort, I continued to shout, God of Pastor Jerry Richard Chukwesi, help me! I screamed, Eroy! Eroy! Eroy, help me! They attempted to harm me with a sharp knife, trying to gouge out my eyes and cut off my right breast. But suddenly the knife became blunt and failed to penetrate through my eyes, only tearing my bra. The knife didn't penetrate my breast, but it tore my bra. They used every charm they could. <laughs> they did not know that I belonged to the fire altar. But nothing worked after all their effort failed. They tried everything they possibly, they dumped me on the Todd Millan Bridge after they tried and nothing worked. And they thought I was dead, thinking I was dead, but a Roy had seen me. A Roy I heard my cry. A Roy, the God that sees. I regained consciousness despite the excruciating pain, with my head bleeding and my face swollen to the point that my right eye was shot. A good Samaritan came to my head and rushed me to the hospital. The doctors were shocked when they saw my condition and insisted on an history and a CT scan to check if my eye and head were okay. But I kept on declaring in my mind, I said, what they are looking for, they will not find it. <laughs> the next day, June 18, 2024, was on Tuesday. While I was still in the hospital, I was on the fire altar, I used my sister's phone. The test result came out perfectly, nothing was wrong with my body. Every part of me was intact. To the glory of God, I am here to say thank you to the God that sees a Roy. <laughs> it did not allow my family to mourn. It brought me back to life. This incident happened just three days after my birthday. The devil wanted to take my life, but a Roy saw me. A Roy saw my family. Hey! All oh, earth prayers, and before that, they had prayed all oh, earth prayers before this incident. That morning, I had laid my hand on the head and prayed all oh, earth prayer, prayers as the Spirit has instructed me to. Pastor Jerry, may the refinery on your head never run dry. In Jesus' mighty name. I have indeed seen the God that sees me. I joined NSPPD altar in 2020 when I wasn't working. 2020, I wasn't so serious when I wasn't getting results. So I wasn't consistent on the altar. 2021, I joined the fast. After the fast, two days after the fast, the fast ended on the, on the 29th. My birthday was on the 30th. Two days later, I started having leg pain on my calf. So I went to the hospital four times and it was wrong diagnosis. It was on the fifth time I went with my husband and the doctor said, do you know what is called deep vein thrombosis? I said, I've never heard it. On my form, she wrote urgent, 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 emergency, that I need to go do a Doppler scan, I need to go to the lab, and I need to see a hematologist. Now, the hematologist only comes on Mondays and Thursdays. Luckily for me, that was on a Thursday. I was on the wheelchair. So I went to the lab, there was a queue, and I said to my husband, let's go and see the hematologist since there's a queue. On getting to the hematologist, I told him, give her the form so that, you know, she knows it's urgent. The doctor came out herself and looked at me. She touched my eyes. My eye, the dark eye was already going up. And she said, you're not going home. She told my husband, go and buy compression socks. Go to the pharmacy, ask them if they have a compression socks and get one for her. She made a lot of calls. Before I knew what was happening, I was in accident and emergency. They tried to take my blood sample. It took a while. Next thing, they gave me injections on my lap. And my husband got the socks and I was wearing it. Before I knew what was happening, I was going through a lot of tests. I went through um, MRI and by evening, the result from the MRI came out. And the doctor said to me, this is not good news. It's something I've been afraid of. And the blood clot has traveled from your calf all through your, your thigh, through your stomach to your lungs. So what that means is the left side of my body was already clotted and is on my lungs. And she said to me, don't massage yourself because if you massage, it can dislodge and then you are dead. So the doctor said to me, there are only two doctors in Abuja that can do the surgery that you need. One hospital, the doctor is not available. 
But the second hospital, we're going to take you through the, we're going to use the emergency bus to take you there from this hospital with your history. So I got to the hospital at midnight, I was there in the vehicle. First thing the next morning, I saw five doctors in the room, two consultants, one specialist for nerve, the other specialist for heart. And then the doctor said to me, you are going to go through a surgery. They are going to put this vena, vena cover filter in my lungs. And it is risky because when they are bringing it out, it will have packed some number of blood clots and it gets tricky to bring it out. I was on the altar, but I wasn't serious. So I said, I'm not taking the surgery, but I'm not going to die. I was in the hospital for one week. I had 49 injections on my thighs, of which I even took two, I took them home. So I was taking two injections in the morning, one at night. This was all through 2021. Six months into the medication, I stopped taking the medication. And then 2022, I said to myself, there's no point taking these blood thinners. Because taking the blood thinners, I was fat, my leg was fat. If I start for long, this leg swells. I said, I'm going to stop it after the crossover in 2022. That it was so intense. I said, I put in my faith on this altar that I am not going to take blood thinners. In fact, they had given me three months subscription that would last too much that I wasn't going to take it. So after the crossover, 2023, a Roy started visiting me. 20th of February on Monday, nine minutes into the prayer, pastor said, blood clots in your deep vein. I don't know who you are. I hear blood clot in your deep vein. Blood clot in your deep vein. Blood clot in your deep vein. If you are the one putting on the live stream, Ashrabadaka, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I command, let it be reversed. 25th of February, he still mentioned blood clot in the lung. I hear blood clot in your lungs. Blood clot in your lungs. If you are the one putting on the live stream, blood clot in your lungs. I command, let it be reversed by fire. Now he finished addressing the one on my leg. He went to my lungs. March 12th, he said multiple blood clots, 744 into NSPPD prayer. I hear multiple blood clots, multiple blood clots about the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I command, let it be reversed right now. April 5th was the last time pastor said it. 21 minutes into the prayer, he dissolved blood clot. I hear blood clot in your legs. Blood clot in your legs. Blood clot in your legs. If you are the one putting on the live stream, I clearly state, I am the one with blood clot in my legs. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce again, let them be broken right now. I announce again, let them be broken right now. I announce again, let them be broken right now. Pyro to that time, I never heard Papa say, blood clot. But the minute I took the leap of faith, December 2022, a Roy visited me from January up until April, my word on blood clot came through for me. I am no longer sick. I traveled to the UK. I came back. My leg is not swollen. I can now wear heels. I can wear fitted clothes. I can walk around. From 2023 to today, I have not taken blood thinners. I have not taken blood thinners. Even when I went to the hospital to go and do a Doppler scan, there was no history of blood clots. The doctor, when I went to tell him, I said, sir, I am no longer on blood thinners. He said, somebody left my office and she slumped dead here yeah, because she stopped taking her blood thinners. And he even said to me, a man stopped taking his own blood thinners. And he came back worse than he was. In fact, his son now has it. I am here today, no blood thinners, no swollen legs, no unequal legs, and I am very, very huge. I want to say thank you, Papa. Thank you so much, Eroy, for being so faithful. Even when I'm not. Thank you, Jesus, for seeing me. Thank you, Eroy, for what you cannot do. Does not exist. Thank you. Glory to God. Please like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification, and share with your friends and family to encourage someone. Remember, there is no impossibility with God. Jesus is Lord. Join NSPPD 7 a.m. Fire Prayers 